so my friend Malcolm MacGyver, who is a, an engineer slash philosopher, has this uh, theory that, that made a big impact on me on one of the many steps that probably took place on the origin of consciousness, which was when fish climbed out onto land for the first time. Because he says, you know, when you're in the water, you're, the attenuation length for you looking at things is a, is a couple meters. And basically, all your little brain needs to do is see something and decide, do I go toward that or away from it? That's all you have time to do. When you climb out on the land, suddenly you can see for kilometers. And now there's a, uh, an evolutionary pressure to develop the ability to contemplate carefully separate choices of action, you know, hypothetical situations. Do I, you know, go through the forest? Do I go down the river or whatever? So the need to contemplate the future in a different way is, uh, is now selected for, and that's one of the steps that is important sure, to... Sure, who, who said that? Malcolm McIver. I can give you the name, M-A-C-I-V-E-R. Um, and it, it fits in with something which I think I learned from Steven Pinker, which was that, you know, he says that the evolution of grammar is an important part of consciousness, and, import, and in, in particular, the ability to talk in the subjunctive about possible things and to make contracts and so forth. And the, to bring this back to meaning, I think that, you know, one of the things, one of the, I'm very pleased to see that one of the concepts that has been raised often in this meeting is the second law of thermodynamics, uh, even though it was never on the agenda. But, you know, one of the things that I think is underappreciated in the search for meaning or even for morality is the idea that what we should be thinking about is not states of being, but processes. Uh, if you even wanted to be a consequentialist, you maybe should not be a consequentialist about where to get to, but about the process through which we are going to get to this specific kind of future state. And I think this fits in with sort of the seeing the dime and things like that. You know, it's small changes in your local state of cognition can, and even if they don't change your state uh, very well, they change how you perceive everything. The other, the other example that I like of that is uh, Michael Berube, who is a, a literature professor. He was talking about some of the political changes after September 11th. And he says, I know all sorts of friends who say, you know, uh, I've been a lifelong Democrat but after September 11th, I'm now outraged by Chappaquiddick, which for the non-Americans, <laughs> for the non-Americans in the audience, this is a, you know, Ted Kennedy had a, an event back in- can you, you know, can you unpack that for me? Yes, so, so Ted Kennedy had this thing uh, back in the- No, I, I, know, about I know, but I want to, I will unpack the whole thing. So uh, there's this event, Ted Kennedy crashed uh, in a car in 1970 or thereabouts and uh, into the river, and uh, there was a woman with him. It was after a party, the woman died. A huge political scandal. And because of people's political uh, sympathies, we tend to sort of, you know, make excuses for the bad things that the people we like politically do and, and, and increase the uh, terribleness of what people we don't like do. So the typical, stereotypical, democratic thought about Chappaquiddick is, yeah, you know, the guy got drunk, something bad happened, that's terrible, but it doesn't change the fact that he's a wonderful legislator that is trying to fight for uh, better health care and so forth. Whereas the Republicans would say, this guy is a terrible person, how can you, you know, hold him up as one of the leaders of your political party and so forth. And there are people who were of one mindset before September 11th, and then after September 11th, you know, there's this increase in the importance of the loyalty aspect of our uh, primitive moral sensibilities. So now we're loyal Americans, and for various reasons which we could unpack, that gets correlated with being a Republican and being America first and so forth, and, and suddenly people's opinion about this long ago uh, event changed. Now they were critical of Ted Kennedy, even though they would have... Uh, it's mostly a joke, but you, you, know, you get the underlying point that what people used as their purported rational justifications for having different beliefs change because is of that this. true that's based on a poll no or not that's at all. your that's okay, just, completely just anecdotal asking. yeah but you know so that's why I like the Aristotle's you know pointing towards your grandchildren even though I'm not going to have any grandchildren I, I have graduate students maybe that's almost Same as thing. good but uh, you know this idea that in the search for meaning uh, we haven't even talked about whether it's okay to have meaning as naturalists because probably we all agree but uh, what kind of meaning could we get? You know, maybe it is something about the process of, of living life and knowing that we are very far from equilibrium and, and the conditions on Earth and in our lives are necessarily changing. How to orient those changes in such a way that they move toward something rather than valorizing where we're going to eventually get.